the season. Amen. 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 And I like seeing all the uh, I like seeing all the uh, decorations as I drive to the church. I know this is one house. I know they really a, a lot in their yard, don't they? <laughs> I like seeing all those. I like seeing all the snowmen and the globes and the Santa Clauses and things. But Christ is the reason for the season. Amen. Amen. Christ is the reason for the season. They are pretty. I like seeing all the lights and stuff driving, especially. I'm out and about at night time. Seen a few houses decorated. It's good to see you all. I know we do have some people out of town, so please uh, remember them in your prayers as they travel in. Uh, today's message is called My Messiah. My Messiah. That sounds good, doesn't it? My Messiah. Amen. Uh, if you have your Bible this morning, we're still in the book of Jeremiah. It's interesting how this is laid out for us here as we approach the holidays here, the Christmas season. If you have your Bibles, if you will turn to Jeremiah with me. Let's look at this here. It's this interesting placement. And you think about it, how God knows everything. God's sovereign and you know why he put this in here. And he knew that we'd be looking at that today. And doesn't that just boggle your mind? How much he knows and Omnipotent, all powerful, omniscient means all knowing. Here in Jeremiah, chapter number 23. Jeremiah, chapter number 23, and we're looking at just these two verses this morning. Jeremiah, chapter 23, verses 5 and 6. If you have your Bibles. We'll turn to that. Jeremiah chapter 23, verses 5 and 6. It reads, The days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will raise up to David a righteous branch, a king who will reign wisely and do what is just and right in the land. In his days, Judah will be saved and Israel will live in safety. This is the name by which he will be called. The Lord, our righteousness. Amen. Amen. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we are thankful that we can once again come and worship you and lift up your name. Lord, after spending time with family and friends and been reminded of what Thanksgiving truly is, being grateful, Lord, we are thankful for all of our many blessings, Lord, that you bestowed upon us. So, Lord, now we ask that you would bless our time here together, bless this service, Lord, bless the message, Lord, open up our hearts and our minds and our ears, Lord, that we may receive the message, Lord, and uh, as you spoke to me this morning, Lord, draw near to you. That's what we came here to do this morning, Lord, to draw near to you and your promise to us. Is that if we do that, if we draw near to you, you will draw near to us. So Lord, help us to do that this morning. I say thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now here in the book of Jeremiah, we see a prophecy. It's a prophetic announcement of the arrival of a future Messiah. That starts off with, the days are coming. You know what's interesting about the Old Testament there is that they're looking forward to the arrival of the Messiah. And then in the New Testament, Jesus Christ came, the promise fulfilled. And now we again look for the coming Messiah. I wonder if we open up our minds and our hearts to this and still look and know that the days are coming. We know the days are coming because in the Revelation it says soon. Soon the days are coming, here it tells us. The days are coming, it's a declaration, an announcement from the Lord Himself, thinking, speaking through His spokesman here, His prophet Jeremiah. The days are coming, declares the Lord. I wonder if that's for us. We need to get all our minds and our hearts ready that the Lord 
is coming. How soon? The Bible says soon. The days are coming. I believe the Lord is saying, hear ye, hear ye. Like the spokesman would say in the old past days when they would go up the streets. Hear ye, hear ye, hear this word. Listen up, my people. The days are coming, declares the Lord. Here we see that the Lord is at work. That he's up to something. It's the Lord who's bestowing grace and acting on behalf of his people. Through reading the book of Jeremiah, you see that they've had a lot of trouble, that the people had been straying away from God, and that their leaders came up, and they didn't follow the way of the Lord, and the land was in a bad place, in a bad shape, bad condition. And here we see in verse 5, the Lord speaks, and he says, the days are coming. When the Lord would act, the Lord's going to do something. He says, when I will raise up from David's line, a righteous branch. You know, when I was reading that verse, that raised up spoke volumes to me. Not only is he going to bring a king in the days to come, to raise up a king through David's line, but actually literally raise him up from the dead, from the grave. He's going to raise up the king. I will raise up from David's line a righteous no more of these corrupt leaders. No more of these kings going their own way. But a righteous branch. Oh, for somebody, for some people to look up to. And say, yes, I, this is the king I will follow. A righteous branch. This will be done. It's the Lord's work. This is the gospel, the good news. Here before us. Here in the book of Jeremiah. The gospel laid out before us. That's what Apostle Paul wrote to young Timothy. In 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 8, he said, Remember Jesus Christ. Christ is Greek, Messiah is Hebrew. He says, Remember Jesus Christ, raised up from the dead, descended from David. This is my gospel. Oh, can you say that here this morning? This is my gospel. This is my gospel. That's what the Apostle Paul said to young Timothy. This is my gospel. This is my good news. For which I am suffering, even to the point of being chained like a criminal. That's what the Apostle Paul writes. This is my gospel. This is my good news. Jesus Christ, raised from the dead, descended from David. See, you can't hide away a good thing. You can't shut up the gospel. You can't silent the message. Here in the book of Jeremiah, we see the announcement of a coming king. Look again with me at Jeremiah chapter 23, verse 5. The days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will raise up from David's line a righteous branch. The Lord indicates a few things here and informs his people about the coming Messiah. We see first that it is the Lord's doing. The Lord at work. It's the Lord's will to do this. It's the Lord who knows the day and the hour. Notice it doesn't say a particular day or a particular time. It says in the days coming. The days are coming. And he informs the people not about an exact date, but a date that lies waiting. A day that lies waiting. Waiting ahead in the future in the coming days. But be sure of it. Be sure of it and understand this, that the days are coming. The Lord is going to do something. It is his doing. It is his work working on behalf of his people. Showing mercy and grace. We looked at it there in Sunday school. It's his provision. Jehovah Jireh, him providing. It's his miraculous work. It is his will, his doing. He will do this. It's a promise. What good news it is, this miraculous work. Oh, what a gospel. Oh, here each year, each time of year, we are reminded of 
the king born. My, my, my. Here in the book of Jeremiah, we see the good news in the middle of a tragedy. Like I said, the land was in all disarray. The leaders were corrupt. The people were going and worshiping idols. And this was God's people. A nation he had gathered for himself. Who he had cared for and instructed. And they had turned their back on him. They had gone on their separate ways. They had all rebelled against the Lord. And here in the book of Jeremiah, before we get to this promise of a coming king, we see a pronounced judgment on his people. I think that's something that we all have to take into account. That the good news is much sweeter, more impactful when we see the problem, when we see the depths of our lows, when we see the depths of our sorrows, when we see the depths of the pain. And then the promise of comfort and salvation, of peace and joy, the promises that are given to us. Oh, how sweet the good news is. We must first see, as they did, the depths that they were in. So the Lord gives his pronounced judgment. It's how the book of Jeremiah opens up. In Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 16, he says, I will pronounce my judgments on my people because of their wickedness and forsaking me and burning incense to other gods and worshiping what their hands have made. Here in the book of Jeremiah, we see the judgment of God upon his people. It's a distracted people, a people whose attention had turned away. They stopped putting first things first. God was no longer front and center in their life, no longer front and center in their hearts. This was a distracted people, people whose attention had turned and therefore forsook the Lord. Their attention turned. They turned away from the Lord. That's what it means to forsake the Lord. They turned away from the Lord and turned to other things. And that's something that you know, I always try to address with the people that come in to see me there at the recovery center. You see, they want to stop using drugs and alcohol and Therefore, they have this emptiness in them. And I tell them that you must fill that emptiness with something. The emptiness, if not, you're going to turn. You're going to turn to other things. We have to be careful what we turn to. These people turn away from the Lord and they turn to other things. And to burning incense to other gods. And in worshiping what their hands have made. We see here the people's attention had turned and their devotion had changed. They began to pursue other things. No longer seeking after the Lord and His will, they sought out other gods and worshipped what we call materialism. It tells us right there. They worshipped what their hands had made. They turned their back on God and began worshipping self. What they could do, what they could accomplish, the work of their own hands. They forgot the giver. They forgot where their blessings came from. They worshiped what their hands had made. The pronounced judgment of God upon his people appears to be cyclical. If you look through history, People begin on the right track, and then somewhere along the way, they forget Jehovah Jireh. They forget the great provider where all the blessings come from. It appears to happen over and over of people straying away from God who, instead of following the only God, the one true God of heaven and earth, they fashion gods for themselves of their own making, burning incense to other gods and worshiping what their hands have made. And so we see here, this is the reason for the Lord's judgment. They had forsaken him. Exactly one year before the death of Martin Luther King Jr., 
before his assassination on April 4th, 1968, the Reverend stood up to give a speech at Riverside Church, which he titled Beyond Vietnam, A Time to Break Silence. In the speech, King declared, a nation that continues year after year to spend more money on military defense than on programs of social uplift is approaching spiritual death. Martin Luther King Jr. was pointing out a choice, a choice for the nation that spelled out that the wrong choice would present an injury of the people's own choosing, a self-inflicted injury that would be mortally grave. As the prophet spoke out, the wages of sin is death. What we buy into would bring demise, would bring destruction. So too, we must take the words to account. See, at the dawn of the last year of Martin Luther King Jr.'s life, he broke with many political alliances by warning that the war and the mil militarism that surrounded it were inflicting a spiritual death on America. An impassioned speech that cast King outside mainstream opinion circles, which considered his advice naive and irresponsible. And then I believe the Reverend finds himself in good company because in the Bible it says, we are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses. And it was the Lord Jesus Christ himself who said, Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad, because great is your reward in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Who is the they the Lord speaks of who persecuted the prophets? And why did the people persecute the prophets if it wasn't for the prophet's stance and his message? You see, the prophet is a mouthpiece delivering the Lord's message to his people. The pronounced judgment on the people about the carelessness of their ways would arouse anger and not repentance. The warning of an upcoming spiritual death was a call to make some changes of repentance turning back to God, a restored conscience, and a breaking of the silence no matter how controversial. The Reverend was persecuted and eventually assassinated a year later. He was killed by the same violence he spoke out against. Violence was sickening the nation's soul. As a well-weathered bullhorn, the Reverend spoke out against what plagued the nation. He was convinced that as a nation, we must undergo a radical revolution of values. A repentance, a great turning of the minds and hearts, a reformation and a reawakening of the conscience of the community to be aware of our true values, the things that God calls for and what brings him honor and glory. And so here we see Martin Luther King Jr. echoed the prophet Jeremiah's pronounced judgment. The people who had forsaken the Lord, who burned incense to other gods and worship what their hands have made. Reverend King echoed the same sentiment when he said, we must rapidly begin the shift from a thing-oriented society to a person-oriented society. When machines and computers, profit motives, and property rights are considered more important than people, the giant triplets of racism, materialism, and militarism are incapable of being conquered. The Reverend called for the nation to make a choice to choose between nonviolent coexistence or violent co-annihilation, to move past indecision to action, and to find new ways to speak for peace and justice. And with that call, he also gave a stark warning. If we do not act, we shall surely be dragged down the long, dark, and shameful condors of time reserved for those who possess power without compassion might without morality, and strength without sight. Listen to those words. Power without compassion. Might without morality, and strength 
without sight. These things occur to the people who forget God and his ways. A polluted people who become corrupt, like the people in Jeremiah's time, who have forsaken the Lord and turned to other gods and worship materialism, worshiping what their hands have made. I feel like we're on dangerous grounds too. I don't know if y'all have been listening to some of the news lately. I recently listened to a diplomat, I guess, from China, a spokesperson from China. And he used the word Armageddon. It's kind of interesting there with China using that word Armageddon. They're on some dangerous grounds here, I believe. As people of the Lord, we are to be praying for peace, praying for our leaders. Power without compassion, might without morality, and strength without sight. Our Lord said, no one can serve two masters. Either you will hate the one and love the other, or you'll be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and man, which means materialism. You can't serve both. So I believe the question is for us today, are we trusting in the Lord or trusting in our own strength? And this can apply not just to the nation, but to our own way of living life. We're trusting in the Lord, trusting in our own strength. Are we loving him and devoted to him and serving him? Or are we loving and devoted and serving our own might of materialism? Well, there's something about knowing the Lord actually seeing him what does the Lord stand for what is right what is just how do we live accordingly Jesus the King came not just to save us but to show us how to live he gives us the strength to do that and he calls for us to take a stand we look there in the Sunday school lesson about those difficult decisions Trusting the Lord by faith. I pray that this year we will see who Jesus really is and we will follow him. Not just through lip service, but actually follow him. Know what he stands for and live our lives accordingly there. There's a king who deserves our highest praise, our love and devotion, our service, our all. The King of kings and Lord of lords, the Lord's anointed, my Messiah. The Lord says in Psalms, I have installed my King on Zion, my holy mountain. And specifically here he's talking to the kings, the rulers of the earth. Who are called to be wise and to take warning in Psalm chapter 2. To serve the Lord with fear, respect, and devotion. I believe this is a word for all time, for all rulers, for all leaders, for all people. Those who turn away, those whose attention shifts and changes to idols and other gods, those who leave the way in pursuit of another, that will lead to destruction. This is the warning. We find the book of Jeremiah in the midst of judgment where the people had turned away, where they pursued other things, where their leaders and kings had failed. They are in the midst of failure. Here we see this, we see the Lord's favor. We see the Lord who will provide a king. What real leadership looks like. I think everybody in their mind has what real leadership looks like. I see it in my Messiah. He says to turn your cheek, to love your enemies. That's the hard way. It's easy to hate. Easy to pull the trigger. Easy to fight and argue. Christianity is a call to put into practice. That's why Jesus, when he found his disciples, he said, come follow me. He didn't want to just give them words on a page, but he gave them and demonstrated through action, <coughs> through loving enemies. see the king 
King of Kings as He truly is. And that it will transform us. It will reshape us. And we don't just know about it, but we'll live it out. Here in the midst of failure, we see the Lord's favor. Wow, my. In the midst of my sin, it says, while we were yet sinners, Christ died. We see here the Lord who will provide. He provides a king. What real leadership looks like. Salvation. My question is today, do you know him? Do you know my Messiah? Do you know what he stands for? Do you know his commands? He said, if you love me, you will do what I command. Not the one way that the world goes. Quite often, the way the world goes is the complete opposite, contradictory, where Christ is pointing, where he is leading. Do you know my Messiah? Do you know him personally? And do you live out what he has called you to live out by following him? It's a challenge, isn't it? It's called for you. Think about Reverend King's stance that cost him his life for speaking out. Where he leads, I will follow. I love that song. I hope this Christmas we will really see the King of Kings. We will see him, we will know him, and we will want to carry out what he has called. To live out his command. So that means if there's strife in family, that means if there's hardness of heart, let's give it to the king. Say, Lord, I want to follow you. The real you, the true king. Amen. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Our Heavenly Father, Lord, we call for us to pray, Lord, to pray for peace. Lord, to lift up our leaders. Lord, we'd like to do that now. We also live in turbulent times. You said that you'll hear wars and rumors of wars. So these things aren't new. But Lord, we know we live in a day and an age where the fighting is on a different front, on a different level than what it used to be. Lord, we know that Armageddon will come. But Lord, you ask and call us to be peacemakers. And right now we call for free peace. Lord, we call for wisdom and pray for wisdom for our leaders. Lord, we call for a revolution of values. Lord, we not just pray for the bigger picture, Lord, but we pray for, particularly in our homes and us as individuals, that we would come and get close to you, Lord, that we will know who you are, Lord, what you stand for, how you call us to act, how you call us to live, that we'll be true disciples. He said, by doing that, the truth will set us free. Help us to live as free people who are committed and devoted to you. We thank you for coming, for being an example of what true leadership looks like. My Messiah, King of kings and Lord of lords, we lift you up. Help us to know what this is really about. It's all about you. Bless us on our way, Lord, give us peace. Help us continue to turn to you in all things. We ask these things in Jesus' name.